It took six days to look into it. Yes, yes, I was sent out. Uh, I did come. I came, and the, yes, the Negro press did. The Negro, the Negro press came to us and asked us our story. The Negro press came to us and asked us what took place. Yes, sir. The Negro, listen, ma'am, the Negro press, the uh, Sentinel, the Eagle, the Herald Dispatch, Jet, all the Negro press, and not only them, across the country, New York, Amsterdam News, Philadelphia Tribune, all of the Negro papers asked us uh, what happened. And, I, and what made me feel so good, and it makes me even feel more good to see uh, Brother Roy Wilkins telegram, that there's not a Negro in America who was gullible enough to eat the story that Chief Parker uh, fed to the uh, wire services. Yes, sir. I don't know. Sir? I don't think, uh, well, I, I, I don't know if I would be wise to say what I think along that line, but uh, I, I don't think it was calculated to happen right then because there was so much ignorance involved. So many ignorant moves were made by the police. It's impossible for me to believe that the police could have planned that thing. They made too many mistakes. They actually, they, they were very cool in practically everything that they did. I'm inclined to believe that one of them did say this. When they were shooting up, they shot around inside the inside the mosque, so much so that, you, that we found bullets laying on the floor inside a religious house of prayer. If someone throws a, 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 a glass through the window of a synagogue or through the window of a church, they, everybody's up an arm all over the world. Here is the police department shooting up a house of prayer indiscriminately. We have, they, and they didn't have any doubt about where they were because the sign in there says that this is authorized as a house of worship by the, by the, uh, uh, the Los Angeles uh, and it says conforms with all of the Los Angeles uh, m municipal codes. Uh, they were left lying on the street for some time, and they were handcuffed. They were handcuffed. They were handcuffed and bleeding. It arrived very late. It, they were. It, they'd arrived very late. As I told you earlier, even the policeman said, "Why should the ambulance hurry? There's nothing but niggers out there." Why, if some of you heard. If some of you could hear or were aware of the conversation that uh, the police engaged in concerning this event, I don't care how much anti-Muslim you might be, your own humane quality would make you resent with shame and uh, the their disgraceful behavior. Mr. with the investigation and the history, you have any to do with them other than the black and the press? At this particular point, at this particular point, it's not our intention to divulge what we intend to do. But I will say this, that no matter how much effort is put forth by the daily press to suppress the facts of the brutal murder of this black man and the cold-blooded shooting of these other six black men, the uh, press in Africa won't camouflage it. The press in Asia won't camouflage it. The press in Latin America won't camouflage it. These facts will be fed to them. And it, and it makes America look like an uh, 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 imbecile to send billions of dollars to all of these dark countries trying to buy their friendship and their sympathy and their allegiance and then shoot down black men in this country in cold blood and think that they can sell their form of the democracy or ideology to those people over there. I'll ask my lawyer. How do you account for the main by the officer? Or the one with God, so or if you, you, use your, your common sense. Uh, I don't like to go into the intricate details, but here's one witness. One witness tells us how that uh, the cop had shot a brother point blank through his groin and through his penis. Shot him in the gut like this. So the brother grabbed the gun to keep from uh, uh, being shot again. He was wrestling, trying to keep that gun from pointing at him, and someone hit him in his head. And when they hit him in his head, the cop took it and blasted him right through here. It's easy for me to tell how a cop got, could, could have gotten shot. They could have shot each other. They went mad that night. They were wild that night. They were like maniacs that night. You don't believe that that one rest of the gun is on an I don't think it's so much the work of the Ku Klux Klan, but they do say that there is a strong uh, Klan-like element in Southern California. And a Klan don't have to put on a white sheet, not in 1962.
The way they can put on business suits, police uniforms, lawyers' uniforms, they come all kinds of ways. But they're just as much Klansmen today as they were uh, 30 years ago. I don't think that... Negro uh, leaders are against police brutality, no matter whom it is practiced against. Sir? What would what, what your penalty be if one of your uh, uh, members of your lot went astray of your rules? What would your penalty be? He couldn't stay with us. Oh, if any, any, Has ever happened? It, yes. Any Muslim who can't abide by the laws of Islam cannot walk with us. It's conceivable we, we, then that one could have had a weapon. No. Case. No. One didn't have a weapon. And you, you can get a microscope, sir. I, I know that a weapon must be found to in some way justify the atrocity that was committed. They must find a weapon. They can't find a weapon. It's like not with a Muslim. We, uh, it, uh, uh, a Muslim isn't even allowed to have a, a, a weapon in his home, much less upon his person. Well, if you are twisting someone's arm, you're the one that attacks. I said, well, the, the, when, as I said, our religion teaches us to always obey the law, religiously. I'm going to tell you, our religion teaches us to always obey the law, above all, first and above all. But at the same time, anyone who attacks us, we are allowed to defend ourselves. To my knowledge, the policeman, in his questioning of the brother, refused to accept the brother's answer. He wanted the brother to be a burglar. He wanted him to be a burglar. And because he had no evidence that the man was a burglar, he wanted the brother to be impolite. But because the brother was polite to the extreme, it infuriated him. And he grabbed him and began to twist his arm. And, sir? No, they weren't, no. I think that the intricate details will be brought out in the investigation. No, no, there were two brothers and two officers. Uh, this uh, Negro special cop that I was telling you about, he, yeah, he drove by and fired shots, and naturally everybody came out. And a lot of people running, weren't he? A lot of the people that you thought were Muslims probably weren't even Muslims. When you get excited, everybody looks like a Muslim to you. <laughs> no, a, a, a Muslim doesn't carry a gun. So when he, when they, I'll tell you, when this, uh, when he started shooting, the alarm went out, as I said, and uh, and from as the papers give it, 75 came, but they didn't come to where the incident took place. They came to the temple. He was at the temple. Yeah, he didn't even know what had happened down the street. All he heard was gunshot. No, sir. When he heard gunshot, he asked his wife, who had his little baby, to please go in the back someplace. There's trouble outside. And he went up and made a telephone call. And when he came downstairs, then the this is when the general alarm cops had, ar had arrived. And they arrived, as I said, with their guns blazing. Yes, very important, yes. Uh, when uh, when uh, if the, the, the police in America have a special riot tactic, which you're probably familiar with, whenever there's trouble, they pull up to the scene and firing up in the air. That's one of the attacks. This is supposed to uh, put fright into the uh, persons who are involved and make them be quelled. Well, this is what these police did. But when they pulled up with their guns blazing, instead of those bl guns blazing in the air, those guns were blazing at Negroes. And what, the, and what Parker is trying to do now is make the Negroes in the community think that we're not Negroes, that we're something different, and that uh, all of them should be against us. 
And once he gets us out of the way, what they don't realize is they'll start on him. Sir? Well, the, 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 any type of unity that's displayed by Negroes today automatically is a threat to the power structure or the status quo. And today, for the first time, Negroes are beginning to show more unity in America than they've ever showed in, in, in the history that we've been here. Uh, our differences are, 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 are set in the background. And this is dangerous. This is considered dangerous by some elements. Everybody else can be in together. Ambulances were, ambulances were rushing to the mosque. So uh, one officer said, what's he, what they rushing for? Just a nigger, just another nigger shot. And when he got to the precinct, he turned to the brother and says, uh, uh, I hope you don't mind what, don't take offense at what I said back there under the heat of emotion because some of my best friends are colored. <laughs> you mind saying that, but, uh, this brother here whose head was beaten, they told him, one officer said to the other, uh, uh, I broke my nightstick over the nigger's head. So the other officer said to him, well, you should have had one of the new kind, and it wouldn't have broken. When the brother who was shot through the, uh, uh, up above the heart and through the penis was laying on the floor, was laying in, 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 the, in the station, the officer was telling him, nigger, get up and run so I can kill you. These things happen. Well, I think, sir, that when you read reports, of the type of information that Parker has been feeding to the press and the press has been feeding to the public and in turn also to the police officers, it has created as the California Eagle, uh, painted, uh, you can get the answer in the California Eagle this week. Beautifully, they described how Parker has been uh, uh, filling his own men with fear and hatred of the black community and especially of the Muslims. Well, the man, see, when you give a man as much power as Los Angeles has given him, and you don't have any around, anyone around here who seems nerve enough to challenge him, naturally he does the same thing that Hitler did in Germany. He begins to think that he is God, and any act that he commits is a godly act, no matter how atrocious it is. I doubt that any other police chief in any other city would dare to uh, come along behind his men, behind the type of crime that his, his men committed in this Negro community, and try and sell it to the white public. In order to uh, clarify that, you'd have to have a knowledge of what was taking place down there. And I was born in America, Where? in Omaha, Nebraska. Did you tell us your name? Well, uh, easy, I can explain it. it I, well, just a moment. When you ask me about uh, uh, my name, If a, if, a, if a Chinese were to come in here and say his name was Patrick Murphy, you'd know that somewhere along the line he, he got in trouble or fell by the wayside. So that's not a Chinese name. No. If a, Chinese, if a Chinese person has no business with an Irishman's name, if a yellow man has, he looks absurd wearing a white man's name, it's even more absurd for a black man to have a white man's name. If the Negroes, and you ask for an explanation, you could take my explanation. If you want it, if you want it, take it the way I give it to you, or you don't want it. The Negroes in this country who have uh, English names, those names represent the last slave master who owned their grandparents. It is not their names. It is the slave master's name. So when we become Muslims, sir, and we turn back toward our own culture, we reject, we, we cut aside completely those things that stigmatize us in this country. X also represents the unknown, and I think you will agree that the history of the black man, before he was brought to this country, you'll find that he came from Africa, which had a Muslim culture and Muslim civilization, a great part of it. And uh, the Mali Empire stretched from the Nile River over to the shores of West Africa. That was a Muslim empire. The Moorish Empire was Muslim. The, uh, uh, the, the, the empires that existed in, in northern Nigeria were Muslim. Kano, one of the oldest cities in Africa, it was a Muslim city 500 years before Columbus discovered America. So now when you ask me how, wait a minute, when you ask, well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is teaching the black people in this country that the only way that we can solve the race problem is not by forcing ourselves upon the white man, but by doing something for ourselves, teaches us also that we'll never have the incentive or the desire 
to do anything for ourselves until we first learn something about ourselves, about our past. NAACP is against any type, any type of brutality, and uh, which we are too. The NAACP is for integration. We're for uh, separation, and uh, we we agree on the objective, but we disagree on the method. Actually, what both of us want is human dignity for the black people in this country, and the NAACP thinks that integration is the road that will bring about a solution to the problem that the black man is confronted with. Uh, I I'm uh, Minister Malcolm X of Muhammad's Mosque Number no. 7 in New York City and the national representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is our spiritual uh, leader and teacher. And Friday night, April the 27th, at approximately 11.15 o'clock, in what has since come to be seen as a tragic comedy of errors, police errors, seven innocent unarmed black men were shot down in cold blood by Police Chief William H. Parker's Los Angeles City Police. One of these seven innocent, unarmed black men is now dead. He was murdered in cold blood by police bullets. Another is paralyzed. Five others are hospitalized from bullet wounds and are also in serious condition. These were seven innocent men, seven innocent black victims of police bullets. This did not happen in Hitler's Nazi Germany. This happened to innocent black men in Los Angeles, California. How could this brutal crime against innocent, unarmed human beings occur in America with no public outcry by the well-thinking Americans? It is because Police Chief William H. Parker has misused the American press the radio, television, newspapers, and the wire services to spread false propaganda in order to camouflage the true facts in one of the most savage, ferocious, inhuman, and atro atrocities ever inflicted upon unarmed, innocent human beings in a so-called democratic and civilized society. This Gestapo-type atrocity and the effort to cover up the atrocity with the sanction and the support of the American press is in itself a crime against any society that professes to be civilized, religious, and God-fearing, and makes America look like a savage, uncivilized police state in the eyes of our brothers and sisters in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And simply because Chief William H. Parker's well-armed stormtroopers wore police uniforms while shooting down these seven innocent black men in cold blood doesn't make the criminal actions of the policemen any more right than the uniforms worn by Hitler and his uniformed Gestapo police who shot down the innocent Jews in Nazi Germany. Despite Police Chief William H. Parker's efforts to justify this brutal act of cold-blooded murder by his police department, and the seeming willingness of the white press to help him suppress the fact, the truth must leak out. And the good-thinking Americans who learn the truth about this case and fail to protest vigorously this type of police state murder should never again speak out against Hitler, Nazi Germany, and the Gestapo police brutality practice against the innocent Jews in Nazi Germany. of the National Association uh, of the Advancement of Colored People, written to Ed Edward Warren, president of the local NAACP, what he says. And I quote, national, the National Office supports fully the protest which the Los Angeles branch has lodged in the brutal police killing of Ronald Stokes. Police brutality against any segment of the population demands vigorous action by all elements in the city. There is an incredible report circulating here that some sections of the Los Angeles Negro community are remaining silent because Stokes was a leader in the Muslim movement. We urge our Los Angeles branch to press and press in all possible ways to bring the guilty police to account and to rally the other groups to do likewise. Never in its history has the NAACP withheld condemnation of an action against police brutality 
because of race or religion, and it will not do so now. That's a statement made from our good friend, Roy uh, Wilkins. Have what? Have the colored policemen ever went in and shot up the Ku Klux Klan? There is no record of of the of a so-called Negro policemen ever making an attack on the Ku Klux Klan, the White Citizens Council, or any group. They are the policemen who police's dance hall came by and fired some shots, and these shots caused an alarm to be sent out over the police network. And instead of, the, instead of the police coming to the scene of the crime, scene of the so-called incident, of the incident, which was a block away from our religious uh, place of worship, they came straight to the mosque. And when they drove up there, they drove up there shooting, with their, as, the, as the local press has already pointed out, with their guns blazing. The local press called it a, a blazing gun battle. Muslims don't carry guns. And what you described as a, lo as a blazing gun battle was the blazing guns of policemen against unarmed black men. Down in cold blood by the officer. He was unarmed. And uh, six other men were shot down in the same manner. They were unarmed. And every police department in America, including the FBI, no matter what criticisms they have of the Muslims who follow Mr. Muhammad, they admit that we do not carry arms. We aren't even allowed to carry as much as a pen knife or a fingernail file. But it was. So after these men were, uh, uh, when the police finally subdued them, and as they shot them down, they handcuffed them. When Ronald was uh, shot, the police weren't satisfied. They beat him. While he, was, while he was laying on the ground with a bullet through his heart, they put a hole in his head with their club. The hole right there, how close they were when they let him, how close they were up on him when they let him have it. And after he had, in, in the autopsy, that was performed, was performed without, in, in the uh, knowledge of his family, of his relatives, they just cut him open to get the bullet because he's just another Negro. And after, after he was shot down, it shows how they knocked a hole in his head with their club, and then had the audacity to, to maneuver the white press into saying that some policemen were injured, but they never pointed out the injuries that they had afflicted, inflicted. There are, uh, one other Negro was shot through the chest, shot a quarter of an inch above his heart. The bullet passed through his uh, hole in Ronald Stokes' head. This is, the, this is the man that was murdered. Now, why would he have to have his head knocked in besides a bullet through his heart? I took, uh, these pictures were taken. Not, these weren't taken by me, but they were taken. And it, I just, I'm giving you the result of my investigation. No, no. Uh, first, let me answer this. This man here was shot. Who was shot through the heart, or rather, shot a quarter of an inch above the heart, and it came out. Uh, through his back. He was also shot in the penis. It went through his stomach. He spent 48 hours in police custody without hospitalization. When finally he made bail 48 hours later, along with two other brothers who had been shot, we picked them up at police headquarters standing in the corridor where they had not received any medical attention. If, if a criminal who has just robbed the bank and murdered someone isn't treated like that. Ask this question. Uh, what about the report that we as the press have received from the police that after this altercation began at the corner of 57th and South Broadway, where the two suspects were being questioned, and uh, the fight did begin, uh, a group uh, of Muslims from the mosque came out and said, We must help our brothers, and there is when the fight really began. Now, 
Our reports are to the effect that these men weren't necessarily unarmed. There was a five-gallon jug. Of, uh, I saw the jug myself, by the way, upon reportedly uh, which uh, the head of the policeman had been struck by one of the Muslims. And there was also a report that one of the... Muslim procedure knows. And this is why it's so hard to sell this story to the Negro public. They have visited our meetings. While you can't even enter the door with a fingernail file, we are more anti-weapon than any group in the country. And you can end the police. If the, if, do you mean to tell me that a man walked out of our mosque with a shotgun or a rifle, as the press said, and the police don't...